Hello and welcome to another tutorial in the Smile Game Builder tutorial series. From this point onwards, tutorials will be numbered in sequence, regardless if they're a multi-parter or a single tutorial, which will make it much easier to keep track in the future. In this tutorial, we'll focus on conditions and how to use them effectively. Now before we begin, I'd like to note that I get daily builds of SGB because I beta tested it. So you may see features or functions in my setup that you don't have yet. This is actually quite useful because it gives me a chance to play around with them and see how everything works. So I can better explain them in more detail in a future tutorial. Also, some things I refer to might not be available to you at the time of the particular tutorial, but you can always come back and revisit them as a reference point for when they are officially updated. So let's start the tutorial. One of their newest additions is in the start event condition where they've added an automatically start, synchronize and run repeatedly option. This is the equivalent of RPG Maker's auto run or parallel event triggers. Conditions are basically if statements, i.e. if a certain condition is true then do something, otherwise do something else. It's the same as conditional branches in RPG Maker. There are two types of conditions in SGB, event sheet conditions and event conditions, also known as event details. Event sheets are basically like RPG Maker's event pages. They work in pretty much the same way. When all of the specified conditions are met, then the appropriate event sheet and their events will activate. Event conditions are pretty much self-explanatory, but we might as well just go through them briefly. Do you have switch, which checks the switch is on or off? A variable box when de dealing with particular numbers. And you have money, the same, but you're dealing with the amount of money that's actually being held, i.e. in the inventory. And then you have inventory, the amount of items, an add condition party, which checks if a party member is in the party or is not in the party. We already covered that one in the previous tutorial. Event conditions can be used either alongside the event sheet conditions or singly as nested conditions, as we saw in the previous tutorial, or even both. They're under the event switches condition checks, obviously. I already covered most of these in 3.1 events overview, so I won't bother with them too much here. Olipek Kupala, I apologize if I pronounced that badly, and I probably did, asked for an explanation on variable box you have two options relating to variables. Variable box is where you set up all of your variables and the variable box check is where you add a conditional branch for your variable. So as you can see in the variable box you can carry out various operators um, set a variable, in this case we chose math fair, and you would set it as a value there. You have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and of course you can assign it for a random number, and in our case it would be from 0 to 42. Note that here the variable box Ref only applies to a single variable. You can't assign the va value of one variable to another. That's in the advanced variable options, a feature that's probably not available to you yet, but likely will be in the next update. There's also no feature yet for putting variables directly into text dialogues. So, as an example of how 
variable box works. I already set up an event to showcase these operators. And as you can see, it displays a message for each one. So, variable box, I set mathfair to fixed 250, and then add 50 to that, and then subtract 25, multiply by 2 or double, and then divide the entire value by 3. So when we now play test it, we can open the debug window by pressing F5 and you can see where you have the events and the variables. If you want to prioritize your variables, i.e. move them up to the top for easier reference, check mark the ones you want to watch. And then when you talk to the dude, math fair is equal to 250, 250 yeah, which it updates. Add 50 to that, subtract 25, double it, and then divide by 3, which you get 183. So after all that, math there is now 183, and you can use it for your conditions. The debug window is notably very useful for conditions because you can keep track of what's going on, what's working and what's not. With that said, let's move on to the main purpose of this tutorial, using conditions. We'll mostly use event sheet conditions because it's probably easier for our purposes. Let's start with something simple using the presets. We return to the cave and we'll move the monster out of the way because we just don't want to fight him. And under traps, we'll place a blue button, which is actually a switch. We'll put it there. Then back to the start map. and we will move the chest out of the way. Again, this is purely as a temporary backup, but this time we'll add another chest also under the traps. So we want the acquire money one, 1,000, which is the original. Then we check the switch blue switch and then just rotate that again so when we investigate the chest it won't open because a switch is not activated tell you what let's play test it so I can explain it better not that any is really needed but it's kind of like just for continuity <laughs> So, we will go into the cave, and you can see there's a blue switch. Ignore him for a bit. And there's our chest. In fact, if we open up the debug window, we can actually see. So we want switch blue prioritized and we can see what's going on with it. 
the chest is locked by some sort of mechanism. So, well, so we go back into the cave. Activate the switch and you can see it's turned the switch on. So let's try for the chest again. The chest will open and you'll get your gold because the switch has been turned on. So let's see how it's done in the switches advanced edit you can see two event sheet conditions off on and on off as a general rule sgb will cycle through the sheets in order in the order they appear hence the numbers so it starts on the first sheet and then goes through each of the conditions until one or more event sheet conditions becomes true and then it will move on to the next sheet and so on and so on starting with sheet one checking if the switch is off the first time you step on the button it will indeed be off because you haven't turned it on yet so then it'll go through the events it'll turn the blue switch on and then it will go through the events to display the rest of it. Then because the switch is now on, it will activate the second page, turn it off again, and it will continue. And then it will turn the switch back off again. Now for the chest, Its conditions work in a similar fashion. This time though it has three sheets. On the first sheet is a local switch which is like an internal switch used specifically for a particular event on a specific map. The local switch is off because it's not activated yet assuming we haven't stepped on the blue switch. And if the switch is on, then it'll go through, add the money, and then turn the local switch on. So for the next one, sheet two, because both switches are now true, You've stepped on the switch, it's gone through the cycle, it's turned on the local switch, so it'll go on to sheet two. Local switch is on, blue switch is also on, and that means you've already gained access to the contents, so the chest will be empty. Sheet three only has one switch, and that's set to the blue switch being off so it'll display it's locked. So you'd have to go back to the cave to step on the blue button to turn this on so this would no longer apply and the chest would not be locked. The events themselves aren't always activated automatically depending on which option you have in the start. Triggered automatically one time automatically triggers the events if all of the said conditions are true. So for example if we change the start event on sheet 2 what will happen is from page 1 if the local switch is off and if the switch is blue it'll go through this and then immediately afterwards will automatically display that the chest is empty triggered automatically repeated is another one to use 
which will do the same thing, but it'll do it in an endless loop, either until it's stopped or one or more conditions are no longer true. Be careful when using this, however, as it can cause conflicts. Usually the player will move quite slowly or something because it's trying to cycle through the events and parsing the keys for movements. So what if you want to make an event where if you have a certain ingredient a woman will run towards you automatically and ask if you want her to make you an awesome potion. Depending on your response she'll react differently. Unfortunately it seems that we're almost out of time or at least to complete this event so I'll go through that in the next tutorial. Before I conclude I'd like to give a shout to Jacob Mann who created an absolutely stunning talking tree model for SGB. It's worth checking out. The link to his video demo is in the description. And that ultimately brings us to the end of this tutorial. As always subscribe if you want more videos or visit me on Twitter, Facebook and RPG Maker Times blog or even all of them. Until the next time, thanks for watching.